with T Quilts and we're here today to start our t-shirt journey. I am actually working on a customer's quilt and I will be making a quilt that I'm calling Harley Treads and I thought that I would share this journey with you. I am so glad that some of you are opting to go on this journey with me and I'm going to actually teach you all of the different steps of how to put together a custom t-shirt quilt so this will not be your standard basic layout so if you're looking for that that's not what this video is going to be about it's going to be a little challenging as far as how you put it together because we will be using a lot of partial seams it's not that partial seams are hard they just take a little planning on how you're actually going to put the quilt top together so I have been writing on a draft that I printed up of the quilt layout so this is what the quilt will actually look like in theory but do note that like your big sections you could have one shirt or you could have four shirts or you could do two shirts and two plain squares or you can add strips and rectangles and so we're going to be talking about that later as we progress through this quilt I will be giving you the various different sizes of what size things should be and so we'll be working with that as we go along uh, what I want to talk about today is a few things I want to do supply list so you can start gathering the different things that you're going to need as well as if you're working on this quilt for someone else if it's a gift or if it's a customer quilt and you have to decide if you want them to have any actual input into the process and so since this is a custom quilt my customer didn't know anything at all about t-shirt quilts when he contacted me he really wanted to know about it he's actually a building engineer so he knows about how things should fit together per se and so he started conversing with me about various things that I could do and one of his designs was that he wanted me to set the quilt into the Harley emblem and I will not do that because that is an actual logo so we're not going to do that we're actually doing the custom set because I explained that to him and he doesn't want the standard set so yeah so you have to decide up front if you want people to have any input I also decided to take some fabrics because I felt like with this particular client that materials were going to be an issue for him and so I took a lot of fabrics and he rejected a lot of fabrics and I have a limited number of fabrics that I'm going to use however I'm going to show you all of the fabrics that I showed him and then I'll show you also the fabrics that he picked as well as the fabrics that he did not choose to put into the quilt so let's go ahead and get started with the supplies this is actually going to be part one of the Harley treads t-shirt quilt and let's get started so you're going to need your very basic sewing supplies you might need some scissors what I tend to do is I cut my shirts apart in oversized sometimes I will use scissors sometimes I will use my rotary cutter and so in conjunction with using the rotary cutter you will need to have a long ruler if you're cutting with your rotary cutter you also need to have some sort of a larger square ruler. This is an Omni Grids ruler that is 15 inches. So anything that's larger than the squares that you're going to cut. So if your largest square is going to be 12 and a half, then you will just need a 12 and a half. But I like to use this 15 inch square. And then you're also going to, of course, need a rotary mat if you're using rotary cutter. Your pattern and directions I will be forwarding to you as we go along. And of course you're going to need a lot of t-shirts and you're going to need quite a few t-shirts. As a minimum I'd say maybe 25 shirts. Maximum I'd say 40 because you can always opt not to use something but having more will give you choices when it comes time to actually putting the shirts into the layout. And so I'm not going to show you every shirt. But I will just show you a few. 
there are times when some of the Harley emblems are very large on the shirts and then sometimes I have shirts that are two-sided and let me find one of those so I might have two emblems that I can count on one shirt so this is this back side of the shirt and then this is the front side so you need to be careful of that and then on the Harley shirts sometimes depending on where they're having their event they may buy shirts that have the emblems of where they were like which Harley location they were at and so you have your logo on the back and then a lot of the fronts of his shirt he's been to Mexico quite a few times and so he has this same logo if I need to use them to build up I will but I will not duplicate these unless they are different colors but if it's exactly the same uh, print on a black background then maybe I won't use all of those but if I need them to fill in then I will so you're going to need a lot of shirts In addition to the shirts, you're going to need, I'd say a minimum of five yards of fabrics. They can be all scrappy or you can go out and buy particular yardage and you're going to use those pieces to fill in around your t-shirt. So I'm going to show you the fabrics that I picked. Originally, I was thinking we were going to use black, white, grays, and orange fabrics so I just pulled some of those fabrics out to test that out and then when I met with him and saw his shirts I also decided that we probably would not be using any pure white because another reason I'm not using any pure white is because if he should sit on his quilt top while it's on the bed white's one of those fabrics that will pick up the color of your black jeans and he tends to wear a lot of black so i decided not to do that so these fabrics here are some of the ones that he did not like so i started with some black and whites i tried to pick prints that were more male in nature no florals no girly things so i he rejected the chevron he reject rejected this plaid this fabric is a checkered pattern, but he also rejected it. This one, I thought it just had hearts. Maybe he might like hearts. He rejected it. Just squares on black and white. Rejects. And he doesn't understand about adding in more fabrics. And so he's not a quilter, so I couldn't convince him to put these in. But if I was doing this quilt for me... These are some of the fabrics that would definitely be included in my fabric. He didn't even want the circles. He didn't want this black brownish fabric. He didn't even want the fabric that was black and white that had like overlaying flags. Didn't like the grays because they were more of a blue hint to them. So he didn't like those. And he didn't like this orange, although it's more checkered board on a diagonal with a little curly cue, but they're so tiny. But he didn't like that. Didn't like the orange with gold. This one I kind of figured he would not like. Kind of looks like a band-aid. I don't know what that is. And then he didn't like the swirlies with the orange, although these oranges were very similar to his Harley colors. In addition, he didn't want the red and white checks because he said he didn't have any red shirts. And he didn't want this black and white check. He didn't want, I, he does traveling, so I asked him about if he needed Texas fabric and he said no, but he did pick something else. We'll talk about that in a minute. I wanted to make sure he didn't want anything that had license plates, so he said no. And then I picked a fabric that had like traveling related and he said he did not want that so i just gave him some options for him to think about 
and I did let him decide on what to do with that. The fabrics that he did pick, he picked a solid black. This is actually a Patrick Loose fabric from RJR Fabrics I've had in my stash for a while and I have plenty of it actually so that will be great. He did pick this pure silver although it does have it's a gray kind of with a silver overlay so I was kind of surprised that he picked that for texture. This was his favorite orange that he picked so he picked three oranges. He got the orange with the silver specks. Hoping you can see that in the camera. And then this last orange here. But this orange here was actually his favorite, the first one. And then black and white that I did get him to accept was this black and white check. He did like that one. And then he picked this one as well. And it's kind of blinding here, but let me fold it up. But you can see where you've got longer lines here in the stripes. Then they get a little shorter, a little shorter as they go down into the checkerboard. So he picked that one. And I can play with this by fussy cutting out various pieces and making it look different as well as I'm using it. And then I was surprised that he actually picked this particular fabric because it was a Route 66 fabric. And so I'm just going to open it up a little bit for you. The only thing that he did not like in this print is the car. So anytime I need something, I can just cut through this middle here. And then that would be okay. Just don't put the car into his quilt. <laughs> and so then after I met with him, I went shopping because I asked him if he liked the flames. And he did like the flames, but I was all out of it. I used it in another quilt. So I went and purchased a yard of flame fabric. And then I also purchased at my discretion the this fabric here that I found. Both of these at Joann's. And it says what happens in the garage stays in the garage. And he just says use this sparingly. And I can always use this in other quilts that I'm making. So maybe I just might put a 6 inch square or something in his quilt. But at least he'll have something on there. That says about the garage. And then I also purchased backing fabric. I actually purchased three yards. He is not happy with the picture of this. It does look a little different in the photo that I sent. But it's actually like a black with the... Like if you were scratching paint and you get a little gray. And that's kind of what it is. But um, yeah, I will be using this hopefully as the back. This came from Joann's as well. I can't remember the price per yard. Um, it was on, I used a 60% off coupon and so I didn't pay full price for it. So I got a good deal on that. So the main thing that you're going to need when you're working with the t-shirt quilt is stabilizer and stabilizer can make or break your quilt. So if you're buying your stabilizer from Joann's, make sure that you have a 50% off coupon or a 40% off coupon before you purchase. And I'm just going to go through and tell you which interfacings I have here, what I recommend you use, and then I even have one that I recommend you do not use. So this first one is from Pellon. I've talked about this also in another video, but we're just going to go back over it really quick. This first one is a Pellon apparel interfacing, and I just like to go by the numbers on the end here, because this identifies the type of fusible that it is is EK 130 and it's a easy knit fusible and I like to use a knit interfacing on t-shirts because they are stretchy and knit interfacing is also stretchy one way and then it's stabilized the other way and I'm also going to talk about how to stabilize your shirts in part two of this series right now we're just talking about what it is that you need the amount of interfacing that you need is determined by how many shirts that you have. I would recommend you buy at least 20 yards of interfacing so you have it. You can always use it in other projects. Or you're going to probably have to go back to the store. We're making a very large quilt and I'm estimating that I'm going to use about 18 yards of interfacing. I don't know that exactly because I don't know how many shirts I'm going to get from him. How many shirts I'm actually going to include in the quilt. 
so you need uh, you need to have more so when you're starting to do the next step you don't have to stop and run to the store so next up is another Pelon interfacing it's SK 135 hoping you can see that number over here it's a sheer knit fusible and when I use this shear it's when I had those jersey shirts where I had holes in the actual jerseys this shear would make it so that the interfacing isn't very obvious whereas with your regular interfacing your white interfacing it's going to show little white specks underneath your holes if you use the shear it's not as noticeable it's like a clear fusible now what I like to do is I like to buy things that I can get at the cheapest price sometimes I notice as I'm buying interfacings from Joann's sometimes interfacing is $4.29 a yard is $3.99 a yard and then I've got one here that's different type though it's $6.99 a yard but for my knits I find that I can get a better price when I go to um Amazon.com. I actually look for a fusy knit interfacing and it comes with 30 yards. So it's right here. Hoping it'll clear up for us. There we go. So fusy knit interfacing. And I just buy the whole boat. And if you're a Prime member, you don't have to pay for shipping. And this cost me somewhere around $50 to $55. I got 30 yards. And it's two dollars or less a yard that's what i really like because even if i have a coupon at joann's for 40 percent off that's not half and then i've got a 30 yard boat here that i can use the next type of interfacing that you can use i just purchased this at joann's they had it on sale for 60 percent off and so i got it it's six dollars and 99 cents I haven't used it in a while because it's so expensive but when you do seven dollars times four so less about 280 a yard I decided to go ahead and buy it but when you're pressing with this one it actually has that fabric feel on the top with the fusible being underneath and that's what I really like about it so I don't know if you can even see the fusible on here but I also like this interfacing as well. I actually prefer this interfacing, but it can be very costly. I also have an interfacing here that I do not want you to use in your t-shirt quilts. So this boat here is Craft and Home Decor Interfacing Stabilizer. It's 808 Craft Fuse. And notice, it says Craft Fuse. This is great for tote bags, for... Anything that you want to be very sturdy. I do not like to use craft interfacing on my t-shirt quilts because it makes them very stiff. The whole purpose of the t-shirt quilt is the people you're making it for or the person that uh, is requesting this wants to use it to cuddle with. They want those memories. You want them to use it to show, share memories. You might be having a bad day and just cuddling in your t-shirt quilt might make it better for you so I want something that they can cuddle with some not something that's going to be super stiff so this is one that I would not use now we've been talking about fusible interfacings and now your last item that I recommend is that you get some form of a press sheet you got all kind of applique pressing sheets that you can use you can even use freezer paper if you have it but I like to use these nonstick sheets that they say are multi-purpose and are food grade safe. They're a lot cheaper than purchasing a uh, true quilters applique sheet. Sometimes I buy these on Amazon. I get two or three of these in this box. And it's just been a while since I have used this. But it even says that it can be used for t-shirt heat transfers. So that's what we're going to use. So people who... And this box was a set of three. So people who make t-shirts with heat presses use this sheet. So if they can use it, then I can use it. And it's a lot cheaper. Like I said, I got a box of three years ago on Amazon. So you can actually search for that as well. And see what you can come up with. So these are the supplies that we need for this project. 
I'm looking forward to it. And we're going to come back with part two where we are actually working with some t-shirts. So that's it for part one of this video. Part two, we're going to start cutting our t-shirts out so that we can stabilize them. So if you have any quilting friends that may want to go on this quilting journey with us, please refer them to my channel. Ask them to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime I upload a video. I'm estimating that we will start this project in mid-July. I'm not sure of a date yet. I have... Um, some things scheduled the first week in July, but I'm hoping either the second or third week in July we will come back with part two. So I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.